you. A lot of neighborhoods have been uniting for a long time behind right. closed doors. But what Kendrick did was he united the whole city mm -hmm. based off of him being a king, taking this violent situation, which is a rap beef, and creating peace and giving the homies the opportunity to be a part of his life. What is up? What's going on? What's going down? What's going all around? Y'all already know what it is. Midway through the week here, that means y'all already halfway up that mountain of success that is a successful work week. Or I mean, just, I don't know how we making money. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but it don't matter though, as long as you still looking up. I'm tall, I don't really look up too much. Anyways, urban culture coming back at you with some more juicy stories, but typically we come in heavy. To be honest with you, I wanted to start off a little light because we going into some ice spice information about her addressing her weight loss concerns and Ozempic rumors. Mm. I mean, if you haven't noticed already, Ice Spice has lost some weight. I'm proud of her. I think that's always a beautiful thing. If you lost weight through working out, through gym time, it doesn't look unhealthy. It doesn't look like a surgery. Like she legitimately just lost weight and she hopped on X Spaces to address that. Here, check this video out. Looks so good. No, it's, called the gym. it's called the gym. It's called eating healthy. It's called being on tour. Yes. Like, like, what the hell? It it's maybe so if I was for. sitting home all fucking day, it'd be easier you, to stay big. She sounds so irritated with the situation. Just the amount of times that she probably has to address that. Like, look. I just work out and I'm always moving. People don't be people don't be realizing if you got you a Fitbit or Apple Watch and you can look and get them steps in and you know how many steps you took a day, that's a major difference. So if you working out and you getting them steps in and you performing, you bound to just lose weight unless you just eating sloppy. But I'm gonna leave that to y'all. How do y'all feel about that? Not only how she addressed it, but people even paying that much attention to, wow, you lost so much weight, that gotta be Ozempic. You know what I mean? Like that's highly discrediting of someone's work. Now I'm gonna switch gears on y'all real quick. We have an update that Blueface gave about his four year prison sentence. So as we know, he unfortunately violated probation and he got handed a four year prison sentence. With that being said though, he phoned in to DJ Head and Gina View's radio show effective immediately. And it was actually Kind of a lighthearted, but at the same time, a cooler exchange of information. Here, here's a video for it. An inmate in the men's central jail. This telephone call may be monitored or recorded. Thank you for using GTL. Blue, you live right now. Hip Hop Nation. Effective immediately with me and DJ Head. Blueface, baby. Hey, hey. What's up with it, bro? Shit, chilling. Man, we Hello? was we was literally just talking. We're literally talking about you right now. We're talking about you right now, live on the radio, bro. And we was trying to. Gina was trying to explain yo the numbers because she was saying that one day equals three days or something. Can you do you know how that shit work? Oh yeah, yeah. So I got sentenced to four years. I got a year credit, so that go down to three years, and I got thirty three percent to get. So you'll be home by summer. Uh, yeah, a little bit before that, probably like April, March, April. Okay, okay. okay. March 8th. So we're looking at a spring release of Blueface. Oh, that's right. You already know. It's going okay. down. Okay, but how are you, how, how are you, how are you holding up? I know I've only been able to like talk to you one time since you've been in there. Like, how, like, what's your mental like? You straight? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm chilling, man. I ain't, I'm, I'm, I'm in my environment. You know, I'm always soaked up and adapt to it, so. It ain't really that. It's really like a, it's like a little break from responsibility, honestly. What changes have you made physically? You got buff in there with that hair looking like. What's going on? Uh, yeah, you know, I cut all my hair off. I'm about to get the waves cracking. Yeah, I'm like 180 right now. I ain't never been 180 before. So yeah, I'm getting sized up. I'm about to bounce out looking like a Dalmatian on the side. <laughs> <laughs> now, what what have you been doing to like pass your time? Like, have you been reading books? You been writing rhymes? Like, what have you been watching TV? Jacking off, watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> burritos and what? using the phone that's pretty much it what you watching in there what, what's like the t what's Blueface watching while he in jail man, man they only got like 12 channels watching a lot of the news the Sherry show and the Jennifer Hudson show <laughs> Blueface <laughs> watching Jennifer Hudson is crazy <laughs> that was old head shit right now <laughs> 
are you do you do they give you are you do you, like do you have access to music to listen to uh yeah i got a little radio actually i heard um uh, i heard that Suck city remix come on one time made my little dance shit yep boom we was just saying how you got the best verse on that on that remix oh uh, yeah i appreciate it you know you know i'm always come spectacular you got any any music in the vault that might come out while you're there we know you dropped a project when you first went in is there anything else dropping uh probably not honestly i've been writing though i've been i've been putting on my writer cap so i got a couple songs for it other people let, it, let us hear a verse just, just rap for me real quick you know come on uh, let me think let me, let me see what I got in the vault uh, who is this verse for who did you write this verse for oh uh, who did I write it for oh no no I'm, I, I ain't gonna give that away I can't do all that okay I'm gonna rap one of my own shit okay let me see I think it's something that ain't out yet fuck uh, I got terrible memory in jail what's up with MILF music hold on let me, let me uh you said new music MILF music oh MILF music yeah 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 that's going on that's a lot of that going on you know uh, coming soon, about to drop, 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 drop. I was planning to wait till I get out, but you no, know, I got a little extra time, so might as well let it all go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I know you had the reality show deal before you went in. What's the What's the update on that? Oh, Rap Queens West. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, Rap Queens. Yeah, they still waiting on me. They uh, they get patient. As soon as I bounce out, we right to it. That ain't done with. That's still going on. Top of Top of next year. Do you pay attention? Who, who out there? Uh, who out there talking smack? <laughs> who out there talking while I'm incarcerated? I haven't heard anybody say anything really like inflammatory or negative towards you. It's really, I mean, uh, other than obviously, you know, like the baby mom situation and stuff like that. But I haven't really heard anybody like have anything to say about you, honestly. Uh, ain't none of them rappers out there popping it like they they waiting for me. I seen Soldier Boy get a tweet off. <laughs> uh, uh, so, well, Soldier Boy still waiting, man. Soldier man, he been turned that fade down on him. He, 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 he talking like he wanted, like he needed. So you offered to 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 take the fade. Was it like you was gonna do it like on Triller, like it was a uh, like a pay per view event? We need that boxing. Soldier Boy promised me a fade, so I, I, whatever's clever, the fastest way we can do it. I'm still on that. On the side. <laughs> I think uh, I think uh, I think in that league. Right, NLE owe me one two on the side. NLE Chopper? Right what did NLE Chopper say? Did he did he agree to it? On the side, he called me out for it. No, I remember that, but I'm saying did he did y'all ever agree to a day or to a like did y'all ever agree that it was gonna happen? Uh the last thing he said was he don't wanna fight me, but I'm not going for that. I still need it. <laughs> on the side. <laughs> <laughs> you plan on getting back getting back in the ring when you get out? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Who you wanna see? Cause you, you had a fight that got that got canceled, right? You were supposed to fight again. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah Doug, Nick Young, Nick Young still can get that. I'm gonna say that. Nick Young, NLE, or Soldier, whoever's ready. Are you I'm ready? Are you open to, to just, are you taking all phase? Like, you open to anybody, basically? Like, you know, it's weight classes and shit in real fighting. I'm just asking if you, if none of that mattered to you. Oh, yeah. No, I'm 180 right now, so it's like, I can either lose it or, or gain it. Whoever, whoever wants it, get it. Like, I seen, you know, Jake Paul is fighting Mike Tyson. Is that something oh, yeah, that. That's crazy. That's gonna be a good one. <laughs> Is that something that you're open to doing as well? Jake Paul, yeah, hell yeah. Jake Paul giving up that, that bag for the, for, the, for the squad. Definitely on that. <laughs> on the side. What's up with Crazy in Love Season 3? We getting that? I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough one, you know. Me and Rock, we, 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 uh, we bother right now. But you know when that fitness get involved, you know, it might get a little, a little weary. Have you talked to her since she's been gone? Have I talked to who? Are y'all able to communicate? Because she's incarcerated as well. Oh, yeah. We stay on the three-way. We stay on the three I just got off the phone with her. What about? Awesome. What about the? What about the? Like the little one? Are you able to like you know be in touch and like have you know have contact or like visitation stuff like that? Uh, not as of now. Yeah. But because she's incarcerated, but hopefully when she gets out, she'll come. Up here well, thank you for tapping in, Blue. We miss you. We look with you. We love you. What you got for the people? Just give us, give us a few words for the fans. Man, I'm ready to bounce out, looking like a hundred and one dumb nation. Feel me? I got my sights set on new plantation. All the shit, you know. Just gonna get better, 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 better,
just in general like he said you know i'm just in my environment i just adapt to it you know what i mean but something that definitely stuck out to me is that he said it's just a break from responsibilities right now and i like that he could have that <laughs> that positive outlook even with how bad things could be but just knowing like look man i'm not out there i can't do nothing about it i'm in here i'm just gonna do what i'm supposed to do day by day that's how i felt when i was in basic training which is of course significantly different you know we just removed from society at this point you got one mission at hand i do like the fact that also he stopped and said you know what being real with y'all I'll just be a hit jacket off and watch your tv eating the real <laughs> that man said i'm big chilling but just another highlight he did say soldier boy promised me a fade so whatever's clever the fastest way we can do it i'm still on that and then i think nle owes me one too I've seen him out there popping it. Like, he said, he's like, look, when I get out here, I'm be throwing them seasoned, refined hands as soon as I see y'all. But in reality, I do like that he has some positivity even with the situation at hand. Uh, my heart still does go out for him and his family. Um, you know, just being any type of separation, it, su it sucks not having a father around and it does suck not having a significant other around. But uh, you do got to just look at the positives about it and try to operate as you can. But what y'all think about it? Like, how do y'all feel about not only him being in there, but his aspect or his outlook on life? Like, what do you what would you do in that situation? How would, what do you think would be your train of thought? Uh, now, nah, I'm still dealing with some people that's uh, dealing with the system. We got NBA young boy who, after he agreed to a guilty plea, had his federal gun case moved to Utah. So originally, NBA young boy was supposed to have his case held or heard in Louisiana. But after that plea, he was able to have his firearms possession uh, moved to a court in Utah where he actually faced some separate drug fraud charges. So with him already in jail on those charges, though, he faces up to a decade of prison on the gun charge, all because he's already a convicted felon. Now with this plea deal, it should at least lower that length of time that he's in prison. Now the wildest part is the extra drug fraud charge that he had on his record. It was basically a scheme. And according to the affidavit, the scheme went like this. A suspect calls in a prescription, claiming the identity of a real doctor and using a fraudulent patient name and birthday, all for promethazine with codeine. Sometime after the prescriptions are called in, they are filled and picked up by a young boy and or some people refer to as known associates one and two. And it's actually allegedly that he impersonated a doctor during some of the scheme, but raised suspicion when he used the word asked instead of asked. <laughs> Just because of some proper grammar or improper grammar, they were able to pick that out. I, damn which resulted in him having 63 counts of identity fraud forgery and obtaining prescription under false pretenses possession of a dangerous weapon by a restricted person a pattern of unlawful activity and possession of a controlled substance my god there were more charges added to it later but I just, how did uh, how do y'all feel? I mean, the scheme is actually pretty crazy, but at the same time, it's like, what what types of methods are they going through to prevent these type of things from happening? Because if all I got to do is call in, impersonate some stuff, it's not even identity theft. So I'm not stealing someone's identity. I'm just acting. I'm <laughs> just acting. <laughs> hey, look, always work on your acting methods, you all. Articulation is key to playing the part. <laughs> all right, but going into another another story here somebody who's actually in some hot water themselves and they're usually in hot water as it is but this this water is a little bit of a different heat for this man dj academics responds after alleged court documents from his grape case surface online mm -hmm. getting juice or no? so basically right now he is maintaining his innocence but there's a lot of fire. I mean, some plasma from social media coming right now after screenshots were posted from the alleged court filing of Zaya and her SA lawsuit against him. Now included in this filing are graphic photos of her alleged injuries from July, 2022, when she claimed two unnamed individuals drugged her 
and then unfortunately assaulted her, which resulted in her suing all three of them for SA, negligent infliction of emotional distress and defamation. You even got some posts on X where someone claims academics grape victim. The court filings have screen grabs and text messages and she's all scarred up. If she was willing, why did they drag her across concrete? Emoji of injured person. The evidence is damning in my honest opinion. Now one thing I can't appreciate is that although academics denied these allegations stemming from the lawsuit, he gave all of the pictures present in the documents to the police and said he has nothing to hide. Even during a live stream in May, he immediately denied the accusations when the story went public. Here's a little video of it. I cooperated. I didn't run to LA like how you did when you killed somebody. I gave over everything. Phones, I gave over 10 phones. Everything, take it. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing nefarious. Look through everything. I sent my security guard, go, go decrypt it that they don't have to waste time. Go get it. By the way, and I'll get to some of the Twitter stuff, for the people who are talking on the, the like whatever, those pictures you see, that's me confronting a woman. I sent those to her. I took the screenshots. There's multiple other screenshots that they won't put in that video. You know why? Because it shows like she's awake and alert. The lawyer is trash for having, having a, a, um, a victim, alleged victim, laying on her, like looking. First of all, who puts a video or a picture like that in a, in a criminal complaint? You wait till trial. I sent that picture to her to say, I know what you did. The only people who have seen that, you know what's crazy about this? The only people who have seen that is me and the police. The young woman who's talking about it has never seen it. These claims she's making, what is she talking about? Which is it? Did you not remember or do you now remember? But now you remember whatever. But those, I sent other pictures to her. Other pictures where she's on all fours. All other pictures where she's moving around. Those are not going to get included by the lawyer. Doesn't help the case. Okay, I'm going to use this picture because it looks like it could go to our story. It's all good. It's fine. Facts of that case is, and tax don't let me put you on some game because you've been in jail looking like you've been doing a lot of telegramming, but not a lot, a, a lot of facts, okay? The police looked at my phone. Messages before and after with the woman. Messages before and after with the other people who might have been at the residence. I can honestly say that's a, a good thing that in order to show my innocence that I didn't do any of this, I'm willing to give over all my information. I'm not hiding nothing. And I rock with that. You know, that's a, a, one of the best ways to claim innocence. You are actually giving up your uh, giving up your freedom of privacy to an extent to say, you know what, check what you need to check. I didn't do what she's claiming I'm doing. I'm curious to see how this whole thing is going to turn out, but what do y'all think? How do y'all feel about the situation at hand? Do you think it's something that, hey, he's already proven his innocence, or is there still some more information that needs to be dug through and investigated? So we're going to sidestep real quick. Uh, still dealing with a DJ to an extent, but we have Tyrese who actually refused to squash his beef with DJ Envy in return to the Breakfast Club. So when Tyrese came back to the Breakfast Club, his fans were still excited about it. But one thing he had to deal with was a lot of emotion and honesty that he shared concerning his divorce, his grief, and his current mindset. Here's actually a take from some of the things he was talking about. Check this out. Is it letting it go? Yeah, because you've been holding it the whole interview. Okay. I've been watching you. You asked me the question. I did, but I mean, I'm, I'm giving you You should have never asked the question I love if you, you didn't want to see love, 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 how hard love, it's love, been love, to love, get love, through. Love, 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 okay, do you hear me? <laughs> black men cry. When divorces happen, women aren't the only ones that are devastated. When a miscarriage happens, mm. real shit out here. I'm going to wipe my own tears. Okay. not my makeup, Tyrese. I love you. never sold you on fake. None of this jewelry on my own is real. Don't love me because of no fucking diamonds. Take all this shit. This bracelet right here look real as a motherfucker. This shit was $23 on Amazon. Um, it don't look fake, right? Uh, this shit is corny. It's all fake. It's all superficial. It doesn't mean anything. Man. Just listen to that again. Just a mental health check. I would say if you got the opportunity, you got the time, call somebody. Call your dad, call your brother, call your cousin. You know, just a mental health check. There's a lot of men who do go through these things and from these situations, they do get overlooked. Now that don't mean check on the women also, but they do get overlooked. Now with that being said though, he also posted up. Now wildly enough, before we even had this 
awesome experience in this interaction between Tyrese spilling his heart, talking about these diamonds from Amazon and, you know, Charlemagne laughing in the back. DJ Envy tried to have him banned, is what Tyrese claims. And it appears that this stems from how they've spoken to each other about their personal, personal bonds and their relationships. And it's just been all around a bad thing this past year. Nobody's sure exactly what sparked this all off because it's, of course, each man for his own, he say, she say, uh, hearsay, you know what I'm saying? But Envy reportedly didn't say anything during the interview. Just nothing at all. Makes you think. Makes you think. Now, if you want to know what this beginning point was between them, there is footage of, of course, Tyrese addressing that Envy said that he disrespected his wife and he never found out any messages or anything that's happened. And then Tyrese addressing en Envy about the divorce and how he helped him to get back together with his wife. There's a lot of, again, there's a lot of things circulating around, but this is all on these interviews between him and the Breakfast Club and also on X. So if you want to go check it out on Twitter, please do catch yourself up to it and we'll see where this plays out this is actually a little bit better than game of thrones to me you know what i'm saying i ain't got to see nobody die but i ain't got to go through the issues themselves but what y'all think y'all think this man been doing that y'all think he actually did it? you think he disrespected us y'all think envy actually has a reason to be mad at him is there some underlying hate because i don't know if tyrese ever showed up just at my house on a tuesday afternoon and just start knocking on the door and the moment my wife answered the door he's like sweet lady would you be my I'm, look i'm practicing every single shore you can i got y'all gonna see all types of japanese symbols flaming punches coming i'm gonna do whatever i can because i can't sing i am bald but i look like that you know what i'm saying that wish i look like a a, a sheen a sheen tyrese right now with a beard it's crazy but anyways, we're going to go ahead and moonwalk over here to somebody else who is currently going through some emotional hardships. We got Kodak Black admitting that he feels lonely and unloved. I'm saying, quote unquote, nobody give a f about me. And I I just want to say, dude, I mean, do you care about Kodak? I hope so. No, but I, ain't. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Anyways, though, he feels like he's being taken advantage of by those around him. Believing they only show concern when things are going well. Not gonna lie, that's kind of the general thing with a lot of people nowadays. That hey, if you can help me, I'll help you, and I care about you. But if you can't help me, I'm not really fucking with you. But anyways, though, he took it to Instagram, and this man said, "Now I understand. Nobody give a fuck about me if I ain't paying." Heartbreak emoji. Lonely AF out here, bro. Frustrated emoji. Now, one of the craziest twists of knife, though, happening right after this is that he saw his friends seeing his story and they, quote unquote, act like they ain't see it, not asking and caring about his feelings. That do suck. Like you post some stuff where you actually pouring out your heart about it and people like, mm, now what this Cardi B talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like nobody even paying attention to it. Like I said earlier, please check on your friends because you never know what they're going through. Check, do that mental health check. Not everybody is going to verbalize it, and that's the craziest one about it. When the people don't verbalize it, uh, you'd rather not read about it while looking at their picture. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, a few weeks back, Kodak Black actually had a video of him swallowing pills on camera despite his efforts to quit drugs. It was on an Instagram Live in late July. He spoke incoherently about being healthy, but then held up two pills in his hand, swallowed the pills, and start saying he finna glitch right quick. I get it, David Goggins method, nobody gonna save you, but when y'all know y'all friends with this man, he didn't brought y'all some good music, he didn't help you through a lot. Man, check on your boy, please. He has been going through a journey. It is a roller coaster, and I'm just hoping that this roller coaster do stop at a spot where he can hop off and still enjoy life without dealing with these type of struggles. But that's just wishful thinking on my part. I don't know what he's going through in life, personally speaking. But what do y'all think? I'm, I actually am genuinely curious. Like, are there some things that you feel addicted to that you like, dog, this is not healthy. Or even if it is drinking, some people, you know, Crit had a couple songs where he said, I medicate, I mean meditate, where he just talking about drinking and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
What are some things y'all go through that you feel comfortable speaking about that you think, I need to say this to somebody so they don't go through the same shit? You know what I'm saying? Since everybody online anyway, as it is. But anyways, another controversial situation. This one between two people, rather. You got Akbar V talking about August Alsina and putting him on blast for his thoughts about dating another man. So August Alsina was on Nick Cannon's council culture platform. And he said some statements. He basically went on to share that God helped him discover other people, places, and things. And one of the things he talked about was him being able to love other men. Here's a video of it right now. And you talked about your love for another man. Mm -hmm. And I know that when we talk about this, we help others. What is opening your heart done for you is not even me that's opening my heart it's that power that's higher than myself i always say that the the greatest gift that god could have ever given me was to expose me to so many different kinds of people places things so it's, it's like when people want you to define yourself as whether you're gay straight bisexual or whatever as you were just talking about love is like much more complex. I'm just the kind of person that's, because love is a language, I'm fluent in love when it speaks to me. Mm. Why do us as humans have to have such direct answers or narrow definitions of why are, do you got so many, many baby moms? <laughs> but, but no, but I'm just saying like, because everybody says, oh, you can't love that woman if you are not in a traditional one-on-one -on -one relationship with her. And right. I don't define it the way that you define it. Right. You, you can't take it personal because we have, haven't all been exposed to the same thing. People have a very uh, monolithic way of viewing things. Now, granted, I hope you did listen, but if you read the caption, she said, Jesus ain't did none like this. Y'all play with God too much. He gives us a choice. How did God do this? And he says, it's a sin. So does that mean God's a liar? Kids, don't believe this. God don't do this. His word don't come back void. If he says, don't do this, and someone says, he told him to do this, that means you calling God a liar, and God is not a liar. Now, I'm not the one to judge because we all fall short of his glory, but don't put God in your worldly foolishness. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but you know, I feel like a lot of people do use God for their own choices, their own decisions. It is a coping mechanism sometimes, you know what I'm saying? That's cool. Personally, I feel like where there's something that you can't specifically prove or there's something that is unknown, there's always going to be room for manipulation and control. That doesn't mean that these religions or some religions are incorrect or anything is there, but it's like there's something that people hope for and they want and they don't know the answer. So what am I going to do? Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Bro, that's not at all what I was going to say. I'm so sorry that, you know, he popped in on him. I really didn't expect him to come in, but he, he was speaking facts. He said, like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> My bad, y'all. I'm, I'm, y'all know I'm having fun talking about these things. If you was just driving or if you was just walking and just listening to this on the go, I hope that just randomly woke you up and shook you up. That's some great shit right there. Yeah, I know y'all like that. All right, anyways, though, let's move to something a little bit more uplifting and unifying we got the unforgettable because people have never forgot about dr draconius sorry dr dre credits kendrick lamar's song not like us for unifying compton let's go now with that being said dr d rizzy pause that just sounded weird dr dre has seen a lot he's been around for a hot ass minute one of the pioneers of g-funk and one of the most respectful figures in the history of California hip hop. And for all those who don't know G-Funk, one of the best songs to listen to, Regulators! Mount up. It was a clear black night. A clear white moon warned G was on the streets trying to consume. My bad, my bad, don't get me, don't get me started. That song go too hard. Warren G, Mickey Ficky, Nate Dogg, God rest his soul. Hey look, straight up you probably need to go ahead and just bump that in your car right now. Give yourself that good little three minutes and 27 seconds. 
But that's just the intro. Let's go ahead, get back to Dr. Dominion Reciprocal Excavator. All right, look, I was trying to use Dr. Dr. Dre. So with the amount of experience he has under his belt, it's gonna mean something if he co-signs or if he supports anything that you're doing. So with that being said, on the pop-out show, on Juneteenth, Dr. Dre introduced Kendrick Lamar's Not Like Us and what turned out to be one of the most iconic moments for this genre. I know y'all remember that performance. I know you remember. Kendrick literally performed about an hour and a half, but the main fact that he did a live performance of a song on repeat and that shit bumped every single time. I only heard about that stuff when people doing, you know what I'm saying, operas, encore, encore, resonant to encore, you know what I'm saying? Like that's phenomenal. Anyways though, the main point about this is that while he was having an interview with Complex Magazine, Dre reflected on that performance and actually stated it was more important than fans might have realized at the time. Here's some video footage of the interview here. Check this out. Obviously, being from Compton, I have to ask you a couple of questions about Compton and the Not Like Us video and everything that went down. Vince Staples recently did an interview where he said that it's always been unified. Would you say that that's true? Well, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I think Kendrick was able to bring that together for that moment. Hopefully, that moment can move forward. I'm not sure if that's going to be possible or not because it's going to take just more than just one event to get that accomplished. In this fact, feels different a little bit, no? It does feel different, but hopefully it can continue. A lot of neighborhoods have been uniting for a long time behind right. closed doors. But what Kendrick did was he united the whole city mm -hmm. based off of him being a king, taking this violent situation, which is a rap beef, and creating peace and giving the homies the opportunity to be a part of his movement and to also move like he moves. Because if you go move with Kendrick, you gotta move like Kendrick. He's about peace, he's about love. He ain't from no gang, he's from a city full of gangs and he unites cities. So that's what this was about. And because violence has always been the lead thing for us on our side. So if you could take a violent rap or a violent song and create peace out of it, he should be commended for that. Man, definitely some excellent insights from Snoop also on there. I, I greatly appreciate what they saying, but I feel like the reality of the situation is, and we can't forget this, uh, because of what Kendrick did in that performance, you need to like, comment, subscribe, and share. As you know, urban culture here always trying to bring you that news to help you get through your week straight up. I appreciate y'all. Go ahead, leave a comment. If you liked it, what you didn't like, regardless, let me know. That's how we get through this all. That's how we unify. That's how we make better content, baby. Already. Peace.